Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, breaking down the Lumetri color panel, part one. The Lumetri color panel in Premiere Pro is the very first task-based workflow to manipulate color and light. Editors can be more creative than ever working with color without specialized knowledge and working in a way that seems fundamental to the creative editing process. Adobe had a look at all the technology they had with Photoshop, Speedgrade, Lightroom, Premiere Pro in creating this Lumetri panel. They wanted to make sure they created controls, controls that were very intuitive like sliders, simple things to understand, like exposure. Yet behind the scenes, very powerful algorithms are at work to give you unbelievable control, but simple controls in the front. But in the back end, the stuff that's going on is just simply incredible. And if you want to take this a step further and then jump into Speedgrade through Direct Link and Premiere Pro, all the stuff you've done in Lumetri Color Panel is uh, compatible inside Speedgrade. So let's have a look. All right, so I'm in the color workspace. I'll just jump back real quick to the typical editing workspace. And this is where you'll normally start. When you want to get into the color workspace, workspace, just hit the color workspace and you'll see the Lumetri panel will come up on the right. The scopes are on the left. I'll have a separate tutorial just for those, but basically you can just right click and choose any um, types of, of uh, scopes that are included. And down at the bottom, it's automatically selected our clip for us. And as I move forward and backward, you see that it selects the clip to allow me to do color correction. So in part one, we're going to look at everything under the basic correction. So there's different levels in here, and there's also a flyout menu at the top that we'll look at. But in this, uh, in this reveal, we're just going to be looking at the basic correction. And we'll start from top to bottom. The first is an input LUT. LUT stands for lookup table and a lot of times people will use a LUT, uh, well they'll use it for two purposes. One, in this example, this was shot with uh, an airy uh, raw camera so it comes in as a log, very milky, uh, not very compressed, the blacks are not black, the whites are not white and as a colorist this is good to have. But directors and cinematographers want to see what they shot on set. So Airy actually has a LUT that you add. The camera knows what it was shooting and the LUT flips it back to something like Rec 709, which is what HD will be based on. You can do the same with RED. You can do this with any camera, with Blackmagic Cinema cameras, with Cinnamon DNG, but you wouldn't do it generally with DSLRs because they're not shooting log like this. Uh, you can reduce the amount of, of uh, saturation and contrast in a DSLR, but this is really the realm of, of the higher end raw type cameras. So in my input LUT, uh, I'm just going to choose my Alexa, which is the default uh, where I'm making this look more like Rec 709. And you can see right away, everything is way more saturated. Uh, my scopes are now opened up from left to right and now I've got something that looks more accurate to what was shot on set. Now below this is uh, our white balance temperature and tint and I'm going to go over to this shot. This was on a red uh, camera and I'm going to show you two different ways uh, that people would use the white balance. I'm going to use the, the white balance exactly as that to balance the white. And I'm looking at my RGB parade to give me an idea. You can see that the red is much higher than the green and blue, which is telling me this is definitely a warmer image. The top temperature slider, you can see as it moves to the right, it gets warmer on the left, cooler. If I move this to the left, you can see that I'm I'm, it's almost like a teeter-totter back and forth. I can move that and balance both of those together, which leaves the green a little bit lower. So I'll just grab this and move it up. And now you'll see a balanced image. I've set my keyboard shortcut for the zero key, which is on the numeric keypad, which is what Speedgrade has. So when I uh, hold that down, you can see there's before and after. What I love about this is, even if you're on an 8-bit display, 
which isn't really color calibrated, I can look at my scopes and I can color balance this. I love this and I use this all the time. Next up is the exposure uh, slider. And this is very deceivingly simple. Don't be deceived by the fact this is one word and one slider. This is an incredibly complex and probably the most complex slider in the Lumetri color panel. Exposure, simply put, when you're shooting with a camera, is how much light is entering that camera. And you can turn the exposure up, turn it down. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the exposure on these clips. So let's go have a look. I'm just going to move over to this area here. And you can see as I move my exposure up and down, you can see what's happening over on the left hand side as it's moving that up and down. And you can see it functions more like a camera. It's intelligent. It works the way that you would expect it. It looks like we're adding more light. There's less clipping and it works the way that a camera responds. That's really, really important. So again, don't be deceived by a simple slider. Very, very complex. And below that, we've got contrast. Now, if you wanna reset these, just double click on them and reset them. I'm gonna show you just contrast on this uh, image alone. And if I push this up, you can see I'm compressing on the left-hand side my RGB parade, and I'm either adding or removing contrast to this. You'll also notice when it hits 100 here, it stops, and at no point are we totally destroying this image. This was a very bold and smart move by Adobe. Typically, you would think that if somebody added a contrast control, they'd allow you to move it all the way to pure white, all the way down to pure black. But why would I have that here if I'm never going to need this? The Lumetri controls were added for editors to make, here's the, the key word, pleasing changes. These are the changes that make sense in this, in this kind of a workflow. I'm not really going beyond what is a pleasing change. Now, if I do want to push this even darker or lighter, I can combine the contrast with the exposure. So, hey, I'm not getting this dark enough, no problem. I can darken this and I can change the overall contrast or conversely, lighten this up and push the contrast at the same time. So the two are working hand in hand. Next, below that, are the highlight, shadow, whites, and blacks. And to help you understand where the, those affect, because isn't the highlight the white and isn't the shadow the black? Well, here's what I've done. I've got a, um, this is a 16-bit gradient from Photoshop that I've brought in. And I wanna show you how, what happens when I push the highlights. So watch this, this is the highlight and you can see what's happening. It's, it is the highlight, but it's, also in the body of the color. It's a little bit lower than, than just the whiter whites. If I'm doing just the whites, you can see I'm only affecting the whites. Same with the shadows. So you'll see the shadow and more into the mid-tone and down here in the blacks, it's affecting the blacks, okay? So that gives you an idea of where those are. And again, you can work with those together at the same time. Um, oh, I also wanted to show you a, another way to use the temperature slider. If you look at this image here, and the sun is setting, and if we wanted to really push the warmth of this, look at this, we can push that warmth and push the contrast and take the uh, overall exposure down. And I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I'm taking down a little bit of the saturation. So have a look at this before and after more uh, daylight definitely coming down to that golden hour in the setting sun. Absolutely freaking amazing. I also uh, have an image here where I have really, really pushed this one just to show you that these are not simple changes that you can make a drastic change. That is the untouched image. That's the original and that's how far I've pushed that. You can see in my controls here, I have pushed the exposure way down here, but I have brought back in my highlights and my whites. You don't have to just pick one of those, you can push both of them. And then notice my shadows and my blacks are both cranked all the way down in here and I get this very, very moody shot from a church against the sky that had nothing to do with the original image at all. Now, there's also auto buttons down in here and we can use those if I can reset this 
to hit auto and you can see it does a pretty good job uh, depending on the image if we go back to our airy file here and I just have I've loaded my input uh, LUT and I've not touched anything click on auto and you can see that also makes a pleasing change inside there now the last one I'll meet leave you with here in in um, the basic correction is this one now check this out. This is a shot from Vincent Lafaray, and this young lad is sitting here inside this um, chair and he's in the darkness. So he's kind of getting hidden in here. Well, let me show you the original. That's the original and that's what I've done. How did I do that? Well, all I did was change the shadow value and in my effects controls, if I twirl down the Lumetri effect, I just added a mask and tracked him and simply just moved the shadows up a little bit. All right, so hopefully you can see why I'm breaking this up into six different sections. That's section one. That's just the basic controls of the Lumetri color panel. Incredibly powerful. I really want to, to stress the fact that you don't have to leave this and go to different th third party tools or plugins or the three way color corrector. Make sure you check this out. This is going to give you unbelievable flexibility and you can use it hand in hand with the other parts of the Lumetri panel we haven't even explored. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the subscribe button for video reveal. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, then there's a special link in the description just for you to get your, your free 30 day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best. Thank you.